in the name of the law. We bring you another of the thrilling stories in this exciting series, taken from actual police case files. begins near midnight on November 4th, 1935. A heavy rain riding the wings of an early November gale lashes down on the sleeping city. Oh, oh I, I beg your pardon. Oh, that's all right. I was holding my umbrella down in terrible wind and rain, and I'm afraid I didn't see you. Oh, that's just what I was doing, and I'm afraid I didn't see you, Mrs. Tyson. Oh, why, it's Ruth Taylor. Oh, is it? Is it Ruth or Jean? I can never tell you Taylor twins apart. <laughs> well, it's hard to tell anybody in the storm. I'm Ruth. I never saw twins so much alike. So you're Ruth? The one that works in the bank? Yes, and that's just what I've been doing, working in the bank. At this time of night? Why, it's after 11 o'clock. <laughs> well, this idea of bankers' hours is a myth sometimes. When they have special statements and things like that to get out. My goodness, this storm is terrible. An awful night to be out. Yes, the streets are like rivers. Uh, Ruth, uh, Ruth, is that a King Street car? I, I, I can't see in the rain. Uh, no, it's a, it's a Norwood Road car, Mrs. Tyson. I'm afraid we'll both have to wait. Here, here let's get out of this store on Well, we're out of the storm under here. Say, that certainly is a pretty umbrella you're carrying. Oh, I like bright colors. That's why I bought this red one. Tell me, how's Jimmy? Jimmy? Oh, that boy's twice the size of any five-year-old. Oh, what a lad. Well, give him my love, will you? I will indeed. He should be proud to have such a lovely girl asking for him. My, Ruth, even under this awning, I can see why they keep putting the Taylor twin pictures in the paper. Oh, well, that's because of my sister. <laughs> I know. And I just bet I'll see a picture of you in that outfit. Green coat, dark skirt, and that blue sweater. Just wait till Jimmy gets a little older. Oh, I think this is your car coming. Oh, no, it's Carl's and it's mine. I'm sorry to have to leave you alone, Mrs. Tyson. Oh, I don't mind. I only have a short way to go. Uh, but how about you? Aren't you afraid to walk from the car line along that dark ravine? Oh, no, I'm not afraid. Good night, Mrs. Tyson. Uh, good night. Now, don't worry about me. What's going to happen to me? storm last night. Sure was. Look, Norm, down there in the ravine, there's a big maple tree blowing down. Gee, Bill, this ravine's creepier than ever. Like something in a mystery story. But say, Norm, what's that red thing farther down the slope there? See? Uh, looks like an umbrella. Never saw one that color of red before. So bright. I'm going to get it. Come on! I'm coming. Say, Norm, that umbrella's a beaut. Hardly broken at all. Just a few ribs. Swell. Let's play parachute. My turn first. I'll jump first. Wait, my turn first. I saw it first. Oh, all right. Here I go, down the hill. Whee! Whee! Come on, Doc. It's my turn. Some climb up that slope. Wonder whose umbrella this was. Looks new. No, no. Looks like a girl. Here you are. Watch me. I'm going for a real ride. Not just halfway down like you did, but all the way to the bottom. Give me a push off. Ready? Go. Whee! <laughs> Whee! I'm bailing out. Bill! Bill, come quick. What is it? What's the matter? Awful. Something awful. Quick, I'm scared. I'm coming. What is it, Narn? What's the matter? Oh, gee, Bill, I... Look, look over there. Where? There, there, see her? It's a girl. She's dead. Girl? Oh, yes. Her clothes are all torn. And her head. Look. This is terrible. Let's run for help. Yeah, come on. Help! Help! help please! Help! <laughs> How long has she been dead, Sergeant? About eight hours, I'd say, Inspector. Horrible death. A uh, fiend was murdering here. So, uh, take that cloth off her head, Sergeant. Yes, Inspector. May the saints have mercy. 
Ah! Poor girl. Poor head is completely crushed. Yes, sir. Looks like the blow just about crushed that pretty head. What a brutal crime. She was so young, lovely young body. But what a fiend. Yes, sir. About all you can recognize is that blue sweater. Blue sweater. Hey, look. There's her skirt. Right over here. Yeah, dark blue. Yeah, here's a great coat. Yeah? Nice clothes. Once. Hey, uh, look over there, Sergeant. What's that? Uh, it's a pocketbook, see? Open it. Money's still here. It wasn't robbery. No, it wasn't robbery. Oh, uh, is there any name in that purse? Well, there's a name on the paper. Ruth, Ruth Taylor. Uh, poor Ruth Taylor. That name's familiar, but not the face. All covered with dirt and blood there. Sergeant, this girl must have been murdered after 11 o'clock. These clothes are all wet. That's right, Inspector. Didn't start to rain until 11 last night. The rain's probably washed away any clues. I don't know. Rain sometimes makes clues. You've got to get this murder. He's at large now. Yes, and he may strike again like this tonight. Oh. I've got a daughter at home, too. What's about this girl, do you? Come on, Sergeant. Pull yourself together. <laughs> get the car and his photographer to hurry up out here. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, here's the pocketbook. Uh, wait just a minute. Ruth Taylor, Drover's Trust Company. Why, sure, Sergeant, I know it. What, Inspector? Why, that face. This is Ruth Taylor, one of the Taylor twins. That face? No. Surely that can't be. Oh, yes, it is, Sergeant. Oh, what a tragedy. And it's the coroner who puts her picture on the front page this time. <laughs> Good morning, Dr. Irv. Well, here's your case. As bad as this, eh? The sooner we get this murder, the better, Inspector. What clues? Well, I've had the police combing this spot since the body was found. There wasn't much in the way of clues. Hmm. Footprints. Plenty of mud. A sizable man made these footprints, Inspector. I want plaster a pair of moles made of these. Well, I've kept them clean for you for that purpose, Doctor. Good. Hmm. Look at the burrs. Mm. Nice, sticky burrs all over the place. And these maple leaves. And oak leaves, too. You count them as clues? Oh, yes. Leaves of the white oak. What's that over there? A uh, piece of concrete, I guess. A bloody piece of concrete, or I missed my guess. Would you say that was the murder weapon, Doctor? And cover the poor girl's head, and maybe I can answer, Inspector. All right. There you are. Yeah. Better. Incredible that one body could be so mutilated. But one thing is sure. Yes? That piece of bloody concrete is not the murder weapon. It's too blunt. You mean that the poor girl's skull was fractured by a sharper instrument? We've got to find that. All right. Now put the men on the job right away, Doctor. They'll rake every leaf in this ravine, dig up the earth. Uh, save a couple of the leaves for me, Inspector. Leaf? What for? I may need them to find the man who murdered this girl. All right, Doctor. You're a criminologist, and I'm just a cop. You try your way... I'll try mine. All right. Maybe we'll catch two murders that way. Don't forget, the Taylor girls were twins. Now, you say, Miss Jean, that your sister Ruth had no enemies? Oh, no. Ruth was so kind, Inspector. So wonderful. Everybody loved Ruth. Well, Miss Jean, have you any enemies? Maybe the murderer was hunting you. Oh, I wish it had been me. There, there now. Remember, you and your sister were identical twins. You looked alike. You dressed alike. Could anyone have mistaken Ruth for you? Anyone jealous? Well, Ruth and I, we both had boyfriends. Sometimes they would get jealous, you know, like boys do. And uh, who were these boyfriends? Oh, Tom Pittman. He liked Ruth a lot. She was worth liking. I loved her. She was a part of me. I'm worth without her. When did Tom Pittman see your sister last? <laughs> well, it was last night. He took her out to dinner downtown. He, he was really jealous. He was afraid she wasn't working last night. He was, he was afraid she was going out with Jim Larkin. Who's Jim Larkin? Well, I suppose you'd call him a real sport. He, he sells cars, owns a big red roadster, and spends lo spend lots of money. He, he was crazy about Ruth. 
Oh, oh please, please, Miss Jean, try to collect yourself. You know, we need your help. Well, Jim was crazy about Ruth, but she didn't like him. He swore he'd kill her before any other man should have her. We used to laugh thinking he was fooling, but... But no. Well, tell me, what's Larkin's address? I don't know where he lives. None of us ever knew where he lives. Oh, that's strange. Well, where does he work? Uh, at the National Auto Sales Company. Oh, the National, eh? Uh, Miss Jean, has anyone ever tried to molest your sister coming home at night? Well, once in a while she thought someone was following her. Yes, a man? Y- yes, Ruth wasn't sure, but she thought he wore a long gray ulster. A tall man, she said. Gray ulster, eh? Did he only show up on rainy nights? Well, yes. But Ruth would laugh about it the next morning, and we'd sort of kid her about the shadow and the gray ulster. The shadow and the gray ulster. Miss Jean, we'll talk to Pittman and Larkin. We'll bring that shadow in the gray Ulster out in the daylight. Sergeant, we've questioned all the suspects brought in so far. I'd better talk to that motorman now. He's right outside, Inspector. Well, bring McSorley in, then. Oh, uh, just a minute. Did you look up uh, Pittman and Larkin? Yes, sir. They're snarling at each other already. I put a dictaphone in there, still like you told me. Pretty soon that pair will be at each other's throat, and then maybe they'll spill the truth. I don't know, Sergeant. This case is getting tougher and tougher. Well, bring in the motor. Yes, sir. Come in. Oh, yes. Come in, McSorley. Hi, Inspector. So you're the motorman of the death car, are you? Death car? Well, Ruth Taylor met her death a few moments after she stepped off that car into the rain, didn't she? Oh, I. To my sorrow, yes. I could take my motorman's handle to the man who committed that murder. Yes, yes, McSorley. Tell me, uh, who was on your car that night besides the girl? Mm, a lot of people. It was a hockey special, Inspector. We'll run them on nights they play hockey in town. You remember the girl? Oh, that I do, sir. And we'll. Uh, she rode with me every day, almost. Where did she get off? At the corner of Gerard and Norwood Road. At what time? Mm, I have to look at my record book, sir. All right. Mm, I, I got there at the corner. At, uh, she got off, sir, at 11.43. 11.43, eh? Tell me, McSorley, do you know any of the people who were on that death car? Why, yes, sir. Uh, there was a lot of hockey fans in the game, and John Dennison and his missus, and Miss Mary Graham, and... Oh, yes, yes, and on the back of the car was Tom Pittman. Who? Why, Tom Pittman. I've often seen him take Miss Taylor aim at night, and I was wondering why he was on the back of the car and not up front near me. Did Pittman get off on Miss Taylor did? Nay, sir, but another man did. What? Hey, when Miss Taylor got off, another man got off with her. Was he tall? Yes. And did he wear a gray ulster? Why, uh, uh, that he did. Uh, did you get a look at his face? Uh, kind of look, yes. Yeah. He had his collar turned up. Well, take a look at these pictures. Oh, Rogue's Gallery, eh? Yes. Do you recognize the man in any of them? Mm, no, not this one. No. no uh, wait. No, no, no. Yes. Here. That's him. Are you sure? I could swear that's the man. Hmm. That's George Angel Face Buchanan. Burglary, petty larceny, assault. Sergeant, arrest Angel Face. Yes, sir. Round up every man and woman who was on that death car last night. But I want Angel Face first. Yes, sir. Sergeant. Inspector, if Angel Face is guilty, he's a better actor than most. He didn't spill a thing. Yes, he held out on me that first time, too. Bring him in again. All right. Back in, Inspector. Oh, hello, Dr. Earl. Come in, Shirley. I'm just having Buchanan in for some more questions. I have a question to ask him, too. Just one? Just one. Come on, Angel Face. Come on. Sit down. Buchanan, what were you doing on Norwood Road last night? I told you. Walking. Walking in that rain... You expect the jury to believe that? Well, it's the truth. The record's against you, Angel Face. I was on Norwood Road, but I didn't kill that girl. All right. All right. Just hang yourself, Angel Face. You had her newspaper pictures in your pocket. So what? I often collect pictures from the paper. Oh, just another twist in the noose, eh, Angel Face? Oh, uh, Dr. Irby here has a question to ask you. All right, Doctor. Uh, yes, Buchanan. Here, take this pencil and write your name on this pad. Write my name? Yes, just write it. Yeah. What can I lose? Yeah, there you are. All right. Anything else, Doctor? That's all, Inspector. 
Take the gentleman away, Sergeant. Whenever you're ready to confess, Angel Face, just let me know. I didn't do it. I tell you, I didn't do it. I don't come, on. come on, come on. Well, Doctor, have you got your man? I don't know yet, but Angel Face is not the murderer. What? Why, but how? Buchanan wrote with his right hand. The murderer of Ruth Taylor was left-handed. See these photographs of her head? Yes. Those blows came from above and to the right, delivered by a left-handed man. Medium height, I'd say, from the angle and the leverage you had on the murder weapon. What was the murder weapon? It was short, about the size of a monkey wrench. For these blows with a wrench would have obliterated her head. All right, Doctor, go ahead. Are you going to give me a picture of the murderer? Not yet. But when you find him, his scotch-clad overcoat will be wet, covered with mud and burrs. But suppose you come over to my laboratory. This is my private laboratory, Inspector. I've never allowed anyone in here before. This Taylor case deserves the honor, Doctor. What are these? Casts of the footprints. The murderer wears a number 10 shoe, rubber heel. Hmm. What's this? Rabbit's hair. Rabbit's hair? Yes. I can't tell you any more about it now, but it may hang a man. The sooner the better. Uh, how old will he be? About 25. He'll have a slight limp and be clean shaven. My tests prove it. But how? I analyzed every minute particle found under the dead girl's nails. She put up a desperate fight. She tore his coat. That's the plaid. She clawed the man. Those enlargements are the stubble of his beard, reddish brown. You'll find a scratch on the murderer's hand, too. Mm, tall, scotch plaid, limp, 25, inch. Donald, I brought the baby. Oh, thank you, nurse. Hasn't my husband come yet? Why, no, but don't worry. He'll be here at the hospital any minute. But he's an hour late, and he didn't come yesterday all day. You don't upset yourself. It's almost time to nurse the baby, and you'll make yourself sick and him. That's right. Put him here right in my arm. There. Oh, isn't he sweet? How oh, happy I'd be if only Harry were here. Well, Harry is here. The boy himself. Oh, Harry. <laughs> Harry, I worry so when you're late. Well, you know how it is, Mary. We've been so busy at the garage. Aren't you going to look at the baby? Oh, sure, sure. He's a cute little type. Oh, nurse, uh, you're not leaving. I'll be back later, Mr. O'Donnell. Hmm, frosty, huh? Well, I must go now, Mary. You're... Leaving already? Well, I promised Ma and Pa to drop by for supper tonight. Well, all right. Come back tomorrow. You will come back tomorrow. I missed you so today. Sure, I'll come every day. Glad you and the kid are so well. We have done well. Little Harry's only three days old, but you can see he's exactly like his father. Exactly like you, Harry, darling. Kiss me. There you are. Cheerio. See you tomorrow. Goodbye, dear. Why aren't you wearing your heavy overcoat? Rained so hard last night and it's cold outside, I know. If you were dying, you'd worry about me. I probably would. You're so tall and handsome and good, Harry. Good. Well, toodaloo. See you tomorrow. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye. all the racket outside, nurse. They're hunting for the murderer of Ruth Taylor. Huh? They're searching houses, stores, every place. Looking for a tall young man who wears a scotch plaid overcoat. Oh, <laughs> well, I hope they find him. But when they do, he'll probably be short, fat, and wearing kilts. Yeah, goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. O'Donnell. What can we do for you, officer? Uh, listen, sir. You keep a grocery store, and you know everybody in this neighborhood, don't you? Well, yes, and it's a good neighborhood, too. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know that. And that's what they tell me everywhere. But this is murder. What? Yes. That Bruce Taylor case. We're hunting a young man, tall, wearing a scotch plaid overcoat. He's clean-shaven and walks with a limp. He's left-handed, too, and, uh... Well, it can't be. No. Can't be what? Well, I know the man you describe, but... He can't be a murderer. Who is he? Why can't he be? Well, he's Harry O'Donnell, a model young husband. 
Wife from just a baby. Where can I find him? Quick. Where? Where? If he ain't at his home on Wood Street, he'll he'll be at Norwood Garage. But but he never killed Ruth Taylor. Not Harry O'Donnell. <laughs> I'd like five gallons of gas. What's your name? Uh, why, customers don't usually ask names. Mm, I'm not a usual customer. Come on, what's your name? I, uh, my name is O'Donnell, Harry O'Donnell. Hold out your hand. Oh, left-handed, eh? Turn it over. What is this? Let me see the back of that hand. I'm inspector of police. Come on. Oh, a scratch, eh? How'd you get it? What, working here on this gas pump? Let me have that tire iron. So this is what you clubbed her with. O'Donnell, you're wanted for the murder of Ruth Taylor. <laughs> I never heard of her. I never saw her except in the newspapers. Any man who can laugh over a fate like that. Well, I wasn't laughing at that. I was laughing at you thinking I had anything to do with this. <laughs> <laughs> Prosecuting attorney will proceed with the witness. Yes, Your Honor. Now, Dr. Herb, I show you this photograph. State's Exhibit 25. Can you identify it? Yes, sir. It's a composite photograph, life size, of the man which all my laboratory tests show is the murder of Ruth Taylor. I object. Objection overruled. Proceed. How was this man in the photograph reconstructed, Doctor? His height and weight were determined by footprints found at the scene of the crime. Her feet were not muddied. Therefore, the murderer carried this girl, who weighed 120 pounds, from the road down the ravine. In doing so, he left tracks that indicated a limp, some slight defect in the right foot. Those tracks also showed a certain type of rubber heel, did they not? Um, yes, those shown in the inset. And the soles were hand-sewn, newly repaired. These photographic enlargements of the footprints in the mud show that clearly. I also indicated that burrs and maple leaves would be found in the murderer's clothing, as the facts prove. And the color of the hair, Doctor. How did you arrive at that? These photographs are giant enlargements of the tiny particles of flesh and hair found under the murdered girl's fingernails. They show, one, the stubble of the man's beard, scratched from his face in the struggle, and two, the fine hair from the back of the hand. The color of both is reddish-brown. Same color hair and beard of the defendant, Harry O'Donnell? Yes, exactly. I show the jury state's exhibit 27. 27. Is this more of Dr. laboratory rubbish? The prosecuting attorney will proceed. Your Honor, this is the final piece of evidence the state will present. Dr. Reb, I show you this cellophane envelope. What does it contain? Rabbit hairs. Rabbit hairs? Yes, sir. In that envelope are 234 blue rabbit hairs. Blue. Where did you get them, Doctor? We found them on the overcoat and on the suit of the defendant, Harry O'Donnell. The defendant's wife recently had a baby, Dr. Herb. Would those rabbit hairs come from baby garments? No baby garments in the O'Donnell, O'Donnell home contain rabbit hairs of this type. These are known as Belgian rabbit hairs. Those on the baby's garments were Ardona. Uh, Dr. Erb, I show you again. State's exhibit number one. Will you identify it again, please? It's the sweater worn by Ruth Taylor on the night she was murdered. What color is this sweater? Sky blue. Rabbit hair dyed sky blue. The same kind of blue rabbit hair as the 234 blue rabbit hairs found on the clothing of the defendant O'Donnell? Yes, sir. Exactly the same? Yes, sir. Science proves without a doubt that the blue clues found in the sweater and on the defendant's clothing are twins. Sheriff. Is the noose ready, Edward? The noose is adjusted, Sheriff. Have you anything to say, O'Donnell? Only that I love my wife and baby boy. That I'm innocent. I'm sorry for my wife and baby. My father and mother. My wonderful wife. All my regrets are for them. Is that all? That's all. The trap door. Spring it. Be with us. 
occurs again when truth and justice triumph in the name of the law.